help celebrate our release of the Vintage Penny Humbucker Helper Copper Guitar Pick, I'm giving away a one-tenth of an ounce silver guitar pick to one of the next 100 people to order and leave a review on their Copper Humbucker Helper. Click below. Hey, y'all. It's Shed Post Friday. Hey, how's it shaking, sexy people? Brad the Guitar just here, and it is time again for Shit Post Friday. First up, this Shit Post Friday, I wanted to show you this. This uh, company called Sandvik Group uh, out of Sweden has 3D printed an all metal guitar that they claim is indestructible. Every element had to be drawn from scratch. Uh, we're confident that no guitar has ever been built this way before. And they gave it to Ingve Malmsteen to see if he could destructificate it and Ingve Malmsteen fails to destructificate it. Uh, of course, it's a heavily edited video, video obviously, and uh, <laughs> I, don't, you know, I don't know the circumstances around which this is being done, but of course he's, you know, he's trying to smash the guitar right. into an empty cabinet, and then he tries to smash it on the stage and tries to throw it up in the air and smash it that way, but the one thing he did not do is try to smash it on his ego, oh! which I'm sure would have broken the guitar in several pieces. But just a weird thing, how do you even 3D print a metal guitar? Are they even doing that now? I guess they they were trying to do that, I think, in order to display the technology of 3D printing metal objects, so. We chose to print the body of the guitar using additive manufacturing, since it makes it possible to produce this kind of design. The material we chose was titanium, since it's a really light and strong material. The benefit is that you can create completely new kinds of designs, which isn't possible with conventional metal cutting today. Pretty cool, actually. I mean, uh, let's see, they're sustainable cutting edge techniques to make something that is both highly precise and amazingly durable. The engineering challenge, they say, was a critical joint between the neck and the body. Uh, let's see, they created the guitar's body via 3D printing. Uh, lasers traced a design in beds of fine titanium powder, fusing the layers of material one on top of the other, and the layers became thinner than a human hair, building up the guitar body. So interesting. I mean, the technology at least is interesting, if not Malmsteen's playing these days. Another thing I wanted to talk about is the sad, sad news. Last week, I was driving, listening to the classical station. They interrupted the program and said that Notre Dame Cathedral in France was on fire, and it was just like punch in the stomach. I've never gotten to see Notre Dame Cathedral. It would have been cool to have seen it you know, before all this happened, because I think the rebuilding process now is going to take probably longer than uh, my life is going to last. So, uh, you know, it's just a sad thing. It, but luckily, a lot of the artifacts they said were saved, including the uh, giant pipe organ, uh, which is the reason I'm covering it here, because uh, obviously this is a music channel and they have one of the world's most renowned pipe organs there. And luckily, the thing seems to have emerged pretty much unscathed. Now, they, it could have had some smoke damage and it could have had some heat damage. Uh, the pipes, of course, some of those are actually, uh, you know, they have reeds inside of there. So it could be that, um, you know, due to all the water and all the heat and everything, it, that those will need to be replaced and the thing serviced and all that. But for the most part, the thing has uh, emerged unscathed. And so that's, that's a great thing. Just a really sad thing that uh, this fire occurred but hopefully they're gonna be uh, able to get that thing rebuilt. Already several millionaires, billionaires have pledged a whole bunch of money, I think like $600 million toward getting this thing rebuilt. So I think surely given that amount of money, um, they should be able to at least get something started and, and get a roof back on the thing and hopefully make it where it's not a complete and total ruin. Okay, so also you guys might remember a while back I talked about holograms. I've talked about those actually a couple times on this channel. I did a whole shit post Friday on those at one point, kind of asking the question, would you guys go and see a hologram? How much would you pay for a ticket? Uh, you know, was that something that you would even want to go see? Uh, and now you're going to, it looks like at least in the United States, you're going to have that ability to go see a couple of hologram shows. One of those, the Zappa family, they're going to bring back uh, a sort of a Zappa experience concert that's going on tour in 2019 
uh, and Zappa will appear as both a hologram and also they have a, it looks like they have a big backdrop on the stage where Zappa is going to like fade into the backdrop as well and you're going to have a lot of cool um, psychedelic colors and things going on and uh, and I believe, you know, it kind of gets interrupted at times with his spoken word stuff, uh, like from interviews and poetry and things like, so it's going to be kind of a whole Zappa experience. So, you know, if you're one of these people who are a huge Zappa fan, if you saw him back in the day before he died, or if you know, never got to see him and you've always wanted to have some kind of Zappa experience, here's your chance. I think Ahmed is the one who kind of has sort of uh, mapped out and written the show so he's kind of the brains uh, behind the whole thing at least according to one source that I saw but it should be really cool but that'll be interesting also uh, Ronnie James Dio is going on tour as a hologram as well and the Dio experience is going to be a little bit different I think uh, there's going to be um, basically bands that open up for Dio doing a lot of Dio songs um, with different singers uh, kind of star-studded thing and then at the end, like the last 45 minutes or something, it's going to be Ronnie James Dio as a hologram coming on with the band uh, and finishing out the show. So that should be really cool as well. And I mean, if you never, again, if you never got to see somebody like Ronnie James Dio of Black Sabbath fame and also of uh, Rainbow fame and also of Dio fame, this will be your chance to at least see a shadow of Ronnie James Dio, uh, a representation of him. Uh, as he might have been in concert. You know, it might be cool to get tickets to that. I mean, if nothing else, it's going to... You know, we buy tickets all the time for strange things. We go we go to the IMAX theater. We see things in 3D. You know, I saw Avatar in 3D, and it was a cool experience. And I can imagine, you know, something like a holographic um, concert being a really cool experience. So, you know, who knows? If the tickets are not an arm and a leg and it rolls through my town one of these shows i might go and see them so uh, also another news you guys know i uh, had some copyright issues here recently and one of those copyright issues was with a um, ship host friday bonus video that i did where i reviewed jason becker's new album uh, well wmg who was the uh, claimant in that dispute uh, have released it now so um, i am no longer in dispute with wmg so I, that video is back up if you guys want to go see that over on channel two i threw down my enemy and smote his ruin upon the mountainside also this is something interesting that i saw on facebook the other day this uh this video check this out pick the note that you want it to translate to pull up a kit that i'm liking the sound of and i can literally just go Bang and it's done. It's gonna be fucking easy, isn't it, bro? We're gonna be able to put our beats down. It's gonna be wicked. It's gonna be wicked, wicked, wicked. <laughs> it's another way for complete musical idiots to make music without actually making any fucking music. And you don't have to learn any coding. You don't have to code any anything. You don't even have to learn the program that you're using to copy and paste things. We are cut shot, isn't it? All right, so that's gonna conclude the news. All right, guys, to round out this ship post Friday, I thought we would open some viewer mail. I haven't opened any viewer mail in a little while, and it's kind of stacked up. First thing I want to show you, this is from Richard Jensen. That's not Richard Benson, by the way. It's Richard Jensen with a J. Richard Benson, Richard Benson. <laughs> That's a very interesting subject, uh, the subject of Richard Benson. Uh, you've got two schools of thought on Richard Benson. Some people think he's the most hilarious thing that ever came along on the Internet. And other people think it's really sad and that people shouldn't beat up on him. I'm kind of of two minds about it. You know, I have to admit that, you know, when you see somebody playing guitar that badly, you know, there's a part of you that instinctively cringes and it's like, oh man, it's like I'm watching a train wreck. And it, you know, at first you, your, your instinct is to cringe and laugh. <laughs> at poor Richard Benson, but then you get, and cause people are throwing shit at him, he just keeps going. And, but then you realize, man, this is fucking sad. <laughs> so you start feeling bad for having laughed. It really messes with your head, so. Anyway, Richard Jensen sent me this, not Richard Benson. I'm sorry, man, Richard, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make fun of your name or anything, dude. I'm just going on a train of thought here. Uh, this train is not slowing down for any anybody. Oh, shit! 
Okay, it says, uh, hello Brad, here's the tool I use to clean pots that are still mounted in a guitar or amplifier. Uh, before you say to yourself, what the F is this guy smoking? We're smoking reefer. Give it a try. I think I kind of want it. He sent me some of these. These come from oxygen machines, so I guess there's some kind of fitting for the, uh, the lines or something. So what he's saying is, I think... This this will fit over the shaft. But see, this shaft is too big, so I don't think it's going to do it. It's not probably not going to work for all of them. It's definitely not going to work for that one. Maybe it'll work for these little mini pots. You see the difference in size. So I mean, these come on most imports. So maybe this is what he's talking about. I guess what he's doing is he's putting this down over that, so it slides down on there. I think he's actually spraying spray, you know, down in here like this, and having it get down having it get any you can I guess you can actually turn it yeah you see you can spray it in there and it sits there and you can turn it with it okay so the pot will still turn with this on it so he's saying just spray some spray down in there and it kind of fills up I don't know if you can see that there's some spray in it and then you turn this and then it goes down the shaft well here's the problem with this um, that I can see if you're using like a deoxid or you know like fader cleaner or something like that that has some lubricant in it, maybe that's okay. But the thing is, when you spray back here, you're actually spraying on the part of the pot that has the contacts. When you're spraying up here, these pots actually come with some lubricant down inside of there. And if you spray spray down in here, this lubricant you're washing it away. And if you wash that lubricant away then these just these will get really scratchy and just really kind of hard to turn I don't know maybe I'll try this on especially like if I get a pot that's particularly inaccessible this might be something to 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 look into you know so it'll it's good that I've got a few of them here I can experiment with later on if I if I run into that sort of situation so thank you man I appreciate that interesting suggestion okay this one is from Jason Yates of Bay City Michigan Okay, this one includes a note. Uh, it says, Hey Brad, I think you can find a use for these. They have been sitting here at home with, uh, with no use. I bought them as a match quartet in my old Line 6, only used two. I have a Bouguera now, and it sounds amazing, but it takes EL84s. I think I, rem I remember now, Jason, us talking about it. But again, it's been a little while, dude. I haven't been able to really get around to these like a had hoped. Okay, cool, man. Looks like a match set of uh, 6L6 groove tubes. That's awesome. That's incredibly cool. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And look, a pick also. That's an Eric Eric Johnson pick. Yeah, those will definitely get get used in something for sure. Let's see what's this? Another pick. Grand old Opry pick. Cool. It's a pick day today. Collectible. Grand Ole Opry pick. Yeah, thank you very much, Jason. I appreciate that, man. That's very cool of you. This package is from Dustin Schilling of Onalaska, Wisconsin. All right. Let's see what Dustin is saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember this. Right on. What is this? Ha <laughs> ha! Holy shit! Holy shit, dude! Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that! Wow! Dude, that's that's some serious fan art. Look at that shit, dude. I got fan art. I have never gotten fan art from anybody except for my daughters. So to get fan art from a subscriber, that is the shit. Awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Thank you very much for that. That is going up on this wall somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where yet, but that's going up somewhere. Very cool, dude. Thank you so much, man. I love that. I absolutely love it. Let's see. It comes with a note. Uh, Brad, thank you for all the great content you put on your channel. I, I know you have helped me, and I'm sure many others understand the ways of the tube. Very cool, man. I'm a teacher in Wisconsin, and on the side I've been working in leather. Please enjoy this custom-created leather strap. You can 
Check out some of my other work on Facebook and in Instagram, Dustin Schilling. So definitely, guys, go check this out. If you guys need any leather work, leather goods, here's your guy right here, Driftless Leather. No way. Are you serious? What? No way. Dude. Man, that is just... Wow. This is nice. This is super nice. I can't believe it. That is so cool, dude. Between that and the and the art, Dustin, man, I appreciate that very much. I, I I wish the only thing I wish you had done is actually sign these pieces of art, dude. I wish you'd sign the back of it for me. Um, but other than that, oh my gosh, wow. That is actually that's amazing. Uh, I I couldn't have if I had paid for that. You know, if I had if I had actually ordered this from somebody and paid for it, I couldn't I couldn't have been happier. Even if I'd bought it, this is incredible. Thank you so much, dude. This is uh, that's that's great, man. Yeah, if you guys need some tooled leather goods, this is uh, Dustin is he's your guy, man. That's cool. Thank you so much, Dustin, for this and for the artwork and um, these are gonna hang on my wall for sure and this will go with my strap collection it's, that's a really nice one too that might even go just go on my telly and stay there the only problem with putting straps on my guitars is I don't I don't keep them in stands like I should and I have a real bad habit of tripping on uh, uh, straps you know when there's a guitar like with a strap on it just sitting around I'll my foot will almost always go in in the strap when I'm trying to walk you know so it drags the guitar onto the floor but um, but yeah, man, this is definitely, that's that's so freaking awesome. Uh, I don't even know how to, words can't express my gratitude for this, dude. I, I really appreciate it. I know you put a lot of time and effort into both these gifts, and that's just incredible. I, wow. And, and everybody else who sent me stuff here is just, I mean, it bl I'm blown away. Okay, we've got another one here from the Flatwoods Monster Museum. This comes from my good friend Andrew Smith, who is the... Uh, curator of the Flatwoods Monster Museum in West Virginia. If you guys are ever over that way, st definitely stop in and check him out. West Virginia is a beautiful country. I say it every time he, sent, he has sent me something, man. Just a great place to visit. As a matter of fact, I've been meaning to take my family over there. Oh, what do we have here? True reports of the strange and unknown. It's like a little dime store uh, rag kind of a thing. That's cool. I'll leave this right by the shitter. Because <laughs> that's exactly where I would read this. Because <laughs> otherwise it'll go up on the shelf and I'll never look at it. Yeah, I'll, I'll have, I'll have uh, fun going through that. But, you, man, you guys have, have got to go check out West Virginia, man. Uh, because it's just, it's just beautiful. Monsters of West Virginia, Mysterious Creatures in the Mountainside. That'll go, right, that'll go on the shitter uh, right by the other book. <laughs> More uh, stickers. Cool. More magnets. I love these magnets too. Nice big magnets. Man, thank you so much for all this swag, dude. I, you know, I, uh, you have seen. I'm sure you guys have noticed all of the Flatwoods Monster stickers um, in the background in my videos and stuff. And, uh, dude, I, you know, anytime anybody sends me something like this, I'm always thrilled by it. It's just like I said. It's like it's like uh, opening a Christmas gift. And it looks like he sent me a shot glass here too. That's cool. That will definitely put be put to some use, maybe even here in a few minutes. Um, you can't live in the great state of Kentucky, especially in the Louisville area, without periodically sampling the local bourbon. Let's see here. Wild and wonderful West Virginia. Cool, man. All right. Look at that. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate that. That's the second T-shirt you've sent me. The other one actually glowed in the dark. I didn't realize that at first. Uh, it's got a, it's got like the, you know, the monster on the front of it. So it's always impressive to the kids too when I like walk in the room real silent and there's like a floating object coming at them. You can really freak them out in the middle of the night. <laughs> Dear Brad, thanks for showing off the Flatwoods Monster stuff I sent in before. The Flatwoods Monster Museum just had new shirts printed, so I figured I'd go ahead and send you one as well. Uh, I've actually got a 1978 Fender Champ that's died on me, and after pulling the chassis, I see nothing obvious. So I may pick your brain at some point for help. Absolutely. When you don't know what the fuck you'll do, uh, let's 
see. I'm praying it's not the Transformer. Yeah, you know, a couple possibilities spring to mind. Uh, you know, those those power switches do go bad on those, man. Uh, you know, there's little contacts inside the power switches. Uh, usually those are riveted together, so they're hard or impossible to clean. But if you do manage to clean the power switch uh, to check that that's not the... I mean, you could check that with a multimeter to see if it's the power switch. But if it does seem like it's the power switch, you can clean the contacts on those. But uh, if you do decide you want to try to spray some spray down there and, and wiggle it to clean it, don't fire the amp back up until it's completely evaporated. Uh, if any of your viewers are interested in the Flatwoods Monster, they should visit Braxy.com. Or check out our YouTube channel by searching Braxton, West Virginia. Okay, I want to show you real quickly what I'm talking about here and an easy way that you can test whether or not at least the primary of your transformer is good and also whether the um, the fuse and the switch are good. Uh, the easiest way to do this, you know uh, you have a plug that's usually a, you know going to be a three-prong uh, power plug, so... You know, you'll have this kind of deal with three prongs. And one of these will be the hot and one will be the neutral. And then in the middle, you'll have the ground. Um, the hot wire that comes in, it will ideally, at least, it will go through a fuse. And uh, then it will go on to a switch. Okay, and then it will go on to the primary of the power transformer okay and then it will come back and then go out um, and of course this will be attached to this will be attached to the ground down here somewhere like that so this is what your circuit looks like on the primary of the transformer and of course over here on the other side of the transformer you're going to have you know your main winding and then you're going to have maybe a 6.3 volt winding and if you have a, a 5 volt rectifier you might have a 5 volt winding up here or whatever you might even have another winding for uh, you know for a, a bias for the output tubes or whatnot but anyway we're not concerned about this part mainly what we're concerned about if you have a dead amp like this what we're mainly concerned about is everything from here to the wall uh, so the quickest way to really test this is to get out your multimeter set it on ohms okay so put it on ohms you'll stick one of your leads it doesn't really matter which one uh, you'll stick one of them to the positive one of them to the or well one of them rather to the hot one of them to the uh, neutral so you'll want to just put it directly on the pr prongs of the plug not plugged into the wall obviously uh, you'll just hook the meter up to those and you'll you'll flip the switch and if this goes to near zero uh, it'll go, you know, down, pro it'll be a few ohms because you have some, you know, impedance uh, through this winding. You have some DC resistance, rather, through this winding. Uh, so if your, um, if, the if the cable is good and the primary winding is good and if uh, your fuse is good and not blown and if your switch is good, then you should get, you know, nearly zero. It'll be, you know, a few ohms. Like I say, it'll be like a handful of ohms maybe one or two ohms at the most something like that and then if you throw the switch to the off position it will go uh, open so that's a real quick way of testing whether uh, one two three components and all of the the wiring on this side of the transformer is good now if, if it doesn't do that if you have an issue where you throw the power switch and nothing happens it just remains open in both positions then check your fuse first if your fuse is good then it's like uh oh I've got some other problem you will want to make sure that the, all the wiring and it, all the solder points and everything are connected and if everything is connected then it, at that point you're immediately going to suspect you have a bad power transformer you know you, you can find uh, the point right here where the switch contacts you so you could do something like this leave one side to this side and then come over here and try it from there and see if you get continuity but from here to here and if you do get continuity from there um, then you know that your switch is bad at that point now switches can go back because you have contacts inside of the switches um, uh, let's see I'll give you an example now this is not a really a power switch but you'll at least be able to see what I mean. Okay, this is just a regular switch. Now inside of this, if I were to take this housing off, inside of there you would see contacts that are thrown um, to make 
contact inside here. Now, if those get, uh, you know, if those get really corroded or if they get really oxidized, you know, a lot of times you'll have the switch in the correct position and they sh the two pieces of metal are touching, but they're so corroded and so oxidized that they're not really getting any kind of contact. So, or it's getting intermittent contact. A lot of times what you can do is you can get some spray and you can actually spray right down inside of the top right there to get to get down in the housing and just switch this a few times vigorously and sometimes you'll luck out and that will clean it but you cannot fire up your amp after you've sprayed um, the uh, the stuff in there you got to give it a lot of time to um, air itself out now it's something like this that's you know it's based on uh, it's basically alcohol based so it's going to evaporate fairly rapidly but it's still going to take a few minutes and i you know don't try to fire the amp up immediately if you have sprayed uh, any kind of contact cleaner down inside of the power switch because if you throw the switch and you're touching it as soon as you throw that switch boom if you're standing if you're standing on ground uh, you're going to get quite a shock and it might even kill you so you got to be very careful about that don't do that um so you know you can clean these switches sometimes you can take them apart but most power switches are riveted together and it's really best that you just go ahead and replace them they're no more than a few dollars anyway and if you find that these tests are pointing to a bad uh, switch then you know by all means buy that switch and that should solve your problems otherwise you know obviously check your uh, fuse and make sure that that's okay um, and that's about the only thing that can go wrong other than the primary of your transformer and if it's that then you got, you know, you've obviously got bigger problems and you're gonna have bigger fish to fry. But anyway, I hope that that helps you at least try to diagnose um, major problems on the primary side of your transformers. When you don't know what the fuck you're doing, don't Okay, dudes, that'll do it for this shit post Friday. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you have, please hit subscribe down below. Also hit the bell, please, to receive all notifications. Uh, I've finally gotten uh, to the point where I think the audience has kind of been built back up from uh, the dip that it took there for a little while. I don't know what was going on with YouTube. So every now and then it's like YouTube flips a fucking switch and it just like limits everything that you do. And then you wonder, well, what did I do? Like some kind of, uh, you know, jaded girlfriend or something. You're like, what did I do wrong? So you're breaking up with me because I'm too blonde? <laughs> but more times than not, you've done nothing wrong. It's just YouTube is just, you know. Ow. <laughs> Ow. They've been fiddling with their algorithm again. And so half the people on the platform take a hit as a result. So, but anyway, yeah, hit the bell to receive all notifications so that you at least get notified when I put a new video up. Uh, and for now, y'all take care.